Arbuckle Tabloid cutting a promo. So hopefully you guys are hearing me on the uh, the video streams, on the live streams. I hope you guys are getting me now. I can't really check right now, but it seems as though that uh, my levels and stuff are working here. I'm on TikTok. I'm also on Facebook and on YouTube and on Twitch. I had to get on here because I've been having conversations about not only what's been going on with WWE Creative, but also about this whole hoopla where everybody is excited about the ratings that AEW had received this past week. And I'm like, are you serious? You're, you're joking, right? You guys are really that excited about this? So let me go into uh, great detail of what it is. Uh, so before I go to the WWE creative and what's, what's happening on that side, I'll go into the, we've already spoken about this in a previous episode with the, uh, the Tuesday night war that occurred, uh, ratings and such, what occurred, what happened, and um, what was the aftermath. Now, for me, honestly, all I really give a fuck about is wrestling for everybody. That's all that matters here. That's all that really should be the proper um, feelings about this. It's like, it's all around good for wrestling. That's what this is this is this is what's about it's good for wrestling and uh, of course everybody's going to have the, the 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 cult followings the the uh, sightings the 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 bashings on one side or another me all i give a fuck about is good what is good what's happening story wise wrestling wise uh, across the board when it comes to the um, the the execution and display and the the connection that's happening with the wrestling fan base and the audience. But everybody has to have a gripe, and like I said, the cult following is just ridiculous this day and age. So, I recently saw a post on, um, and this is one person that I saw a post on numerous fan pages about how AEW Dynamite on Wednesday night reached 900,000 on their ratings and such, as opposed to NXT, who had, I believe, like 791, something of that magnitude, right? And it's like, yeah, look who wins in the ratings and such. And I'm like, oh, God. I really don't want to get into this conversation, but I have to. So. Let me just give a brief synopsis of certain things that you people may or may not understand, or maybe you're just trolling, or maybe you have like this scorned um, feeling against WWE and such. And by the way, if anybody wants to have a conversation with me on Facebook about this, I could always just put you on my stream yard and I'm going to put the link in the uh, group chat section and um, I'm just going to do this quick because yeah I know there's other thing that yeah let me just put I'll put it in the comments and um, if anybody wants to have a conversation about this with me just um, just jump on there let me just do this quick and um, yeah I'll, I'll 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 link you in, and we can have a combo on it. There you go. It's in the comment section. So, any case, um, so let me just get get you tuned into something. First off, if you try to compare the ratings from last week to this week, it's irrelevant. It's honestly, it's irrelevant because the head to head is what matters. You got to go on to what happened on both shows. Both shows happened at the same time, and AEW lost. Nobody sat there and bitched, moaned, and cried about anything when NXT was losing week by week to AEW, which was a bad PR move and a stupid move by Vince at the time. And this is why I, I put the creative on that as well. I um, I say that 
there's a bad move by Vince because he should have non he shouldn't have gone head to head with an up and coming company in which everybody and the masses of wrestling were looking for everything other than your company because they were not happy with what you were producing at the time. It's 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 facts. Why would he do that? And he stacked the deck. And this is a conversation that I had with the boss, Rich, here at Rageworks, where we believe that Vince did that to make Triple H look like shit. He wanted to make him look like a failure because he knew that somewhere along the line, Triple H was the heir to the throne for creative. And look who won the bingo card. So with that, this day and age, now the game has changed. Everything's different now. Everything is now on the level of, hey, check this out. Um, now we have different creative, we have different bodies in position, we have different talent, we have different um, um, attributes that are being used now. So, um, what's going on, Ben, my boy, Ben from Britain? Um, it's, it's more of a thing now to where the landscape has changed. The COVID era has changed. The, um, the talent wise has changed. So now it's a different, uh, variable that's being took, uh, taken now and being displayed to the new audience. You went head to head with NXT and AEW went head to head with a NXT and NXT went head, whatever the case may be of how it, it boiled down to. And everybody's like, well, WWE had to stack the deck with bringing in uh, their main roster talent and legends. Okay, so what the fuck is the problem with that? Where, oh, they couldn't use their regular roster. Really? So AEW, who has. Brian Danielson, Cesaro, uh, Adam Copeland, Christian, um, Keith Lee, Swerve Strickland, uh, name them, whoever the fuck you are, uh, 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 um, um, Soraya, uh, Ruby Soho, these are old, old fucking WWE wrestlers. They were previously in on on that on that um on that roster. We'll get to that in a minute, Ben. I, I'll hit you. I'll hit you up in that minute about what's going on for your birthday. But yeah, what what do you think was going to be the variables here? What do you think was going to be in in play here? They're using new relevant roster stars and legends as opposed to what you're using now on your card, which is WWE wrestlers that would just let go or they decided not to be there anymore. I don't know. So I, I would think that maybe, just maybe, you would have won, you AEW fans would have possibly won because all the stuff that you had been saying for the longest about WWE is, oh, they're not using their roster right. They're not using their wrestlers right. They're not using uh, um, their gimmicks right. They're, you, they're putting them to waste. They're doing nonsense with them. They're doing bullshit with them. They're just, 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 they're, they're just bottom or mid-level card wrestlers when they should be top tier. Okay, now they're on a show that should be on top tier or upper level um, type of scales and what happened I'll wait yeah you got trounced which is not a bad thing because you're going against a machine you're going against if the NBA decided to go against the world and they were able to pick anybody in the NBA to play against like to, to play with anybody from Damian Lillard to fucking uh, 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 um, uh, Giannis, to Steph Curry, to anybody they could pick, anybody, not because of region or where they cut country, they can, anyone who plays for the NBA to go against the world, you're going to pick the fucking best out of the best out of the fucking best. Your 12th man will be the best dude 
on an NBA team. So what made you think that WWE was not going to do that? Let's be real here. That's one. Two, I gave an out, and it's a legitimate out. The out is, hey, Dynamite ran on a night that it usually doesn't run on. It ran on a Tuesday because of scheduling issues. They knew ahead of time what was occurring. They knew that, hey, we're going to be moved and we're going to go up against NXT, so we're going to have to do what we got to do. You did not think that the Beast wasn't going to get bigger? Of course they were, because they knew the same thing that you knew. At the same time, wrestling fans, just like sports fans, just like any fans, are a creature of, uh, of habit. They are a creature of uh, uh, repeative actions, meaning if I'm a Giants fan, and I know the Giants play on Sunday, every Sunday, if all of a sudden they have a Thursday night game, sometimes I go, oh, shit, I forgot the Giants play tonight. So I might either remember it or I'll catch it mid-game or I'll forget altogether. and be like, fuck, the Giants played already. Didn't know that. Especially, excuse me, especially being part of a fantasy football league, I got to be on top of all of that shit. Nonetheless, yo, what's good, Smooth? What's happening, Pop? What's happening? I put a link in the um in the in the comments for for Streamyard. If anybody want to chime in in this conversation, you guys could jump in. I'll add you on or whatever the case may be. So if you want to, if not, y'all watch. It's cool. Let me just rant. Any case, so I'm giving AEW fans an out because I'm a wrestling fan in a whole. In all honesty, what it is is they're a creature by nature. So. If you watch the ratings, some of them jumped back in because they remembered, oh, shit, AEW ran on a Tuesday. Gotta, I got to check it out. What they checked out wasn't for them. And it was like, okay, let me go do this. If you watch the ratings, if you guys are playing it close, and but by the way, I'm not a real ratings guy anyway because at the end of the day, we watch wrestling differently these days. You watch it on YouTube. You watch it on other websites. You watch it uh, on your DVR. You watch it on your phone. You watch it any other place. It's not the same way that you you constantly watch it all the time. There isn't a, a, a fluidity to it like it used to be. Like I said, Saturday night's main event ran on a Saturday night. Wrestling Challenge would run on a Saturday afternoon. We were a creature of habit. And if it moved without us having a TV guide and such like that, that they said, hey, um, Bruce Lee's Kung Fu flick is going to preempt uh, wrestling challenge or wrestling superstars um, for a later hour, we would sit there and go, what happened? Are they not going to show it anymore? What happened? So that occurred. It could be a, re a reason for that. That happens. Lastly, like I mentioned, counter-programming. Counter-programming. That's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to do that. Every, in every genre of business, every genre of entertainment, you have to counter-program. Movies, when they're getting released, they, one movie has to have a bigger billboard than the other one. One movie has to get bigger posters than the other. One movie has to have a 15-second commercial or another one gets a 20-second commercial. There's always counter-programming. Always has to do that. And this is what occurred. Counter-media. That's what's happened. But I don't know what, what happened with wrestling. Like I said, I am one that it's, I'm not a cultist. I'm not following. If anyone who's been burned by WWE for years has been me. I've been the one who's been burnt by WWE for the longest fucking time. I'm probably like, I mean, I'm in that elder stage of wrestling fandom when it comes to WWE. I'm, I'm getting to that level. I could get an AARP card from WWE since I turned 40. Like they owe me residuals and shit for as long as they've burned me. I was there for the new generation era. I was there for the fucking attitude era. I was there for the, the ruthless aggression era. I was there for the PG era. I said, and all that shit was shit to me. It all was shit. 
I mean, honestly, this it's all have been nonsense through all the time. So if anyone who's been scorned by the John Cena era or the fucking Roman Reigns era or the era of ridiculousness of the divas and all this, it's been me. I've been burnt by all this shit. And at the same time, I am not a WWE apologist. All I say is Vince McMahon fucked everyone for years and we fucking took it. Because why? We had no other options. Straight up and down. Yes, I was one who ran and watched TNA for a long time. I was really excited. We would watch um, Raw on the Mondays, SmackDown on Fridays, and then I had Right smack dab on a Thursday night, I had TNA Impact. Great. Loved it. I was one of those. I was like, fuck, I wish WWE would have like that kind of flow and, and, and um, connection with the fan base and the wrestling that they had, like Impact had during that time, especially during 05, 06 to, uh, to 2010. I was all up on Impact. Then Impact decided that we got to fucking follow the WWE model. Whoops. Look what happened there. They went and got a fucking owner who fucking changed the game. Whoops. Yeah, that sucks. I look at, when you go to Pluto TV, you look at the old Impact channel that they have. Oh, it's fucking great wrestling, man. You, 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 you sit there and you go, damn, this is when wrestling was fucking on that level. It could, could be competitive. Same with the same with Ring of Honor. I would watch, when I would find Ring of Honor matches during that same era, I was like, thank you, internet. Because... I wasn't getting Ring of Honor anywhere else, but thank you, Internet. But if there's anyone, like I said, who was scorned and was an abused fucking wrestling fan because of the ridiculousness that WWE did, it was me. But you know what? Stood firm. Stood with it. And I was one of those that said, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait till it turns. Yeah, look at Ben. Ben says he was there with Naked Midian. <laughs> it's like he was there for doing all that shit. By the way, for you guys who are WWE fans for the Attitude Era, and I keep reminding y'all, it wasn't really that good. Look at it again. It wasn't really that good. Now, times has changed. The old man is gone. From what we see, Endeavor has said, fuck this. We can't have this dude around. All he does is poison the fucking well these days. The era of his creativity has long passed. And now, enter. The Paul Levesque era, the Triple H era. And with that being said, you former WWE fans who felt burnt by what occurred with, during the Vince era wouldn't even fucking, are not even going to open your eyes to the fact of what the fuck is happening these days. Do I really think Sting is going to retire? God, I hope so. We can't have that old man fucking keep, continue to take these ridiculous bumps from the top of a ladder through a fucking table and hopefully not break a rib or a kidney or lacerate a, a, a liver. Like, we, we need him to go away. I mean, he had his run. He made his money. It's time for him to go. Now you could go do your WrestleCons and your fucking um, StarCast and make all the money you can. Don't go the way of Taker. What Taker said, fuck that. I'll come in, do a choke slam, and I'm out later. I'll make my money somewhere else. I thank you for your career, Sting. Shit. So back to my rant with this whole thing. A lot of you fucking former WWE fans or wrestling fans, whatever the case may be, is now that scorn that. AEW is now in the building. Yay, the new guy is in. He's got a new jersey, a new helmet. He's fucking great. He's awesome. He started the season, and the record was like 14 and 4. They were fucking killing it early on and great. Now your record is uh, 6 and 12, and um, you're still waiting for that, that draft pick to come through. The quarterback is... is um. I don't know. He, he, he's scrambling in a pocket because the offensive line is not doing it. I had to go do the sports analogy because I don't know what the fuck to explain with you guys. But you're still sitting there trying to give excuses like, yeah, don't worry about it. All we need is a good Sunday and we're good. We're back in the game. We're good. We're good. Yeah, that happens all the time. It will happen. But right now, you're on a fucking decline. You're on a heavy 
fucking decline. Because after you done looted the fucking free agency market, which, by the way, which is the smartest thing that Vince ever did, which he sat there and said, you know what? Let's give them all the fucking talent that they that they want. Gave it to them, and look what they did to it. Squandered, squandered, squandered. From a company who sat there and said, we're going to be the one that's going to be opposite of WWE, and we're going we're gonna, to um, raise up the talent that were in the indies. We're going to promote new stars and bring up new talent and make sure that the 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 the, the, the horizon for the for the WWE fandom that 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 was long gone now it's whoops yay check this out you are sitting there and still waiting for the next messiah yo what's good my people's on, on TikTok what's happening but once again yay you had your time in the sun. You have your MJFs. You have your Darby Allens. You have your uh, 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 your Santanas and Ortizes. You have your Ricky Starks. You have all that talent that was um, not WWE. You have them now that's all yours. You have your uh, uh, Sammy Gravaras. You have all that. And then what? All that talent that you all backed up and had ready there, they couldn't be NST on that Tuesday, right? Hmm. So what'd you do? You loaded it up with a Brian Danielson. You loaded it up with your John Moxley's. You loaded it up with your, your Adam Copeland's, your Christian's. You did all that. And once again, I'll go back to my whole thought process with the, uh, yeah, uh, I was burned by WWE. I'm still getting burned by WWE. Still am. But at least at this time, I'm looking at it, I can say the, the horizon that I was looking for is starting to, to change a little bit more. The old man is gone. We're waiting to see how a lot of uh, the talent in which Triple H and Shawn Michaels and uh, that NXT squad that they've been waiting for for the longest to break through to see how they manifest on the main roster. You're seeing the LA Knights. You're seeing the uh, uh, um, Bronson Reeds. You saw with what happened with Gunther. You're seeing what's happened, the progression here and there. But yeah, it's 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 not enough. It's not enough because a, a, a lot of once again, a lot of the the, the, the former WWE fans, you, you're like scorned fucking lovers. You can't get over the fact that you were screwed over. You were screwed over. You can't open the door. I did a whole cutting a promo, and metaphorically, it was talking about. And when I did it, I gotta find what episode it was. I'll, I'll post it later on. It was about how WWE was a former lover of mine and I found a new love with another promotion. I don't know whether it's going to be a, a, a forever thing, but I'll always look across the street to see if you're looking at me. And, and this, was a, this was about a year or two ago I did that. And now it looks like the, you know, the, the, the lover that was, that's across the street is maybe looking at me. I want AEW to progress. I want it to help. NWA is now uh, on the on the precipice. Or if not, it's already solidified that they're having a, a a TV deal with CW, and they're looking to expand their product to where that they're um, going to to go the territory style and have like a Midwest for their for their promotion. When did they backtrack Becky Lynch? What do you mean that they put her back? What they put on NXT? Um, why did they do it? To draw more eyes to that product. They already have an idea. Nick Khan, Triple H, and all that. They don't want NXT to just be their minor league. They want it to be on the same, the, the same playing field. So cross-promoting is what you're supposed to do. Hell, that is what you're supposed to do as a company. They never wanted NXT to be their minor leagues. We called it that because we had that was their 
their stopping ground for indie wrestlers to come in and, and sharpen up their skills from outside of their WWE norm. That's what NXT was supposed to be. But that's not what they wanted it to be. You know what's that now? AEW Rampage. What or, or what used to be AEW Dark or whatever the fuck it is. That's what it was. But now it's more, now they're trying to elevate it. They, they're also trying to sell the fucking show because now they need a network for it. They want to make NXT an equal. Don't be surprised if Survivor Series NXT invades or some shit like that because that's what it's going to be. They want to take that product and elevate it. And that's what you're supposed to do. You can't sit on your laurels, especially now. Creatively now, if you have those three shows meshing together and intertwining rosters or, or man, fine, there's a brand split, quote unquote. And I'm a big fan of the brand split. But at, this, at the same time, if you're sitting there as a business person trying to elevate one with the other and trying to put over uh, um, stars from one place to another, well, God damn it, you have all the fucking tools there in front of you. Why not use it? I mean, that's a stupid move if you don't do it. I, 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 I see what certain people write on, on message boards. And I said, I know this, if it's, it's, it's this, um, this cultist kind of following, you know, it's almost political sometimes when it comes to, um, to, to, to wrestling fandom. It's like, dude, it's, I'm not going to sit there and, and tell you how to, Taking wrestling, but geez, come in with your fucking facts. Come in with your 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 real opinions, and stop just sitting there and resting on on the fact that I'm gonna ride or die with this company because I was burned by the old one, or because I just don't. Like, if you if you are a fan of deathmatch wrestling, more power to you. And I've said it for the longest. I don't like it. I'm not gonna bash you for it. That's what you're into. When somebody asks me, have you ever seen this match be such and such and such or as a death match? I go, no. Why? I'm not into that. It's not my thing. Are you a fan of women's wrestling? I do. I am. But I'm only into good ones. I don't like fucking um, putting females in a ring that they're just pretty. And, and you might as well just call it mud wrestling or jello wrestling. If you can't hit the ropes right, if you can't hit the turnbuckles right, if you can't um, execute a body slam properly, if you're sloppy, you look... I'm not going to sit there and fucking shine a, a, a flash up your ass and say, hey, the cave is fucking clear. It's not. It's bad. Man, I'm not going to sit there and, 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 and just say, hey, it's all wrestling. No, I get it. I understand that aspect. But when it comes to this gang mentality, when it comes to uh, 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 AEW versus WWE or Impact versus and it's like your reasoning is it sounds ridiculous to me. Anytime you you give them a a, a a conversation to talk to, oh you're a fucking WWE. It's like no, I'm not a WWE person. I just told somebody and my one of, one of my boys. I told him I said you're an AEW fan and you hate WWE because you were burnt by them for the longest. You can't even put over a really good match with them. Because you can't judge wrestling properly. You're supposed to be a wrestling fan, but you're not a wrestling fan because what you want to do is you want just want to bash WWE. That's all it is. I don't bash AEW because I want to bash it. I've had conversations for the long. There's people that's in the in in in, in the company that I've had on the show that I've wanted to see be successful, want to see progress, want to see them make something of themselves. But when I'm watching something, then I'm like, yikes. This is problematic. Yeah. It's fucking problematic. We've done seen it where if you guys want to go with ratings wise, ratings wise, that company has hit its moment. Early in the in the in the, in the early stages, they were breaking, you know, a million here, a million there. Because they were the new kid on the block. Now, once they know a certain wrestlers on TV. Ratings drop. Once they know a certain rate, uh, a wrestler comes on, ratings go up. Once they know what the main events are or what the card is, 
ratings flatten out. They have a steady program. Um, there was a certain wrestler from uh, that I had a conversation about it on TikTok. I mentioned I was like, what can a what can AEW do to um, elevate their ratings? He fucking makes a video about it to me. He's like, elevate their ratings. They have their ratings. They have their fandom. What the fuck do you mean? Get the fuck off my page. You're an idiot because your whole process as a wrestler and as a promoter, as a booker and an owner of a company is to continue to build. You don't just sit there and stop and go, well, that's what we got and that's it. So I guess uh, that's how we're going to roll. No, you're going to continue the progress, continue elevating. So once you feel that you've made it to where you are, every time for my podcast, if I see that, I'm stuck at a certain, I'm like, nah, what the fuck can I do to make this show better? I'm not going to sit there and fucking just, well, this is the only things that I get and that's it. No, I'm going to try to find other outlets. I'm going to promote. I'm going to do advertising. I'm going to connect with, with other uh, podcasts. I'm going to connect with wrestlers. I'm going to do everything so I can get my, my, my audience to grow piece by piece and not just go, well, you know, I only get 200 a week and that's it. No, you're supposed to elevate. And for them to sit there and be stagnant and be like, well, 800, 850 a, a show is what we're, we're, we're going to get. Well, that's it. We're good. It's not good business, man. The only way it's good business is because you have a billionaire fucking owner who could throw out money as long as he can or until fucking daddy stops giving it to him. But like I said, right now in WWE, Creativity uh, is 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 uh, the creative is is it's it's being changed. I told people before it was going to happen. I said that it was it was going to come down the line, that one way or another, with this this um, endeavor um, purchase and TKO now a whole thing. That now it's like they're not going to sit there and just because he's on the board that they're going to let him run shit. No, they want to keep it young. They want to keep it fresh. They want to see how the ratings go. They want to see the approval ratings. They look at the social media. They look at all this. And at the end of the day, they said, hey, listen, old man is not going to be able to do it. We saw what the fuck he did after the Monday night after Raw, and it was a debacle. It was dreadful. And I said it episodes ago where I said, what they're going to do, they're going to put grandpa in the corner of his room, have him eat his TV dinner while they play porn on the TV and let him go, don't worry about it. You, you're going to come out later. We're going to have you book a match. And they're like, we're not going to have a book a match. That's not me. We're not doing that. It's ridiculous. Come on, guys. It's, it's a dawn of a, of a wrestling era. WWE is not going to be shifting. Is it for the good or bad? Time will tell. AEW should be shifting on the same way. Is it going to happen? Only time will tell. You know, but at the end of the day, this this cultist, tribalistic kind of thought process makes no sense when none of you guys have an inkling of how the fuck business works. None of you guys have a fucking inkling of how the fucking ratings work. And I always tell you guys, none of you have a fucking inkling because you can't even book a fucking card on WWE 2K23. And not to say that I can't either. But at least I have an understanding of like, hey, one business is opposed to another one. One is on an upswing and one is going down. And don't get me started about the media nonsense because that should have, that's a whole nothing cut of, that's a whole another cut of cutting a promo. When we come back, we have much to talk about, guys. Thanks for checking in on TikTok. Thank you guys for checking in on the Facebook Live for you guys who are showing love. Thank you guys for checking in. And um, more to come. And uh, check you guys in a second. <laughs> 